This is problem number three for assessment number four. And this problem it says solve the inequality, write the solution in interval notation. I'm going to show you two ways to do this problem. So here's the first way, and here's the second. And the first way we're going to use an algebraic approach to it, and the second way we're going to use a graphical approach. So let's do the second way first. This is the graphical. Now, for the graphical approach, I like to take this uh, absolute value inequality, and I like to put it as just an absolute value equation. So I'm going to say that this equals 8. So I replace the inequality sign with an equal sign. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, there's two equations. This has to produce an 8, or it has to produce a negative 8 inside the absolute value sign in order for this to equal 8. So I'm going to say 0.25x minus 6 equals 8, or 0.25x minus 6 equals negative 8. Now I'm going to add 6 to each side. So that's 0.25x equals 14. Divide by 0.25. So x equals 14 divided by 0.25. That's going to give you 56. Or add 6 here. 0.25x equals negative 2. Divide by 0.25. x equals this is negative 8 when you divide those. So I have my, essentially you could call them roots for this absolute value function. What I'm going to do is I'm now going to test from negative 8, 56, I marked them on the number line, and I'm going to test values to the left of negative 8 and the middle of negative 8 and 56 and to the right of 56. So when I go to test this, I'm going to test negative and I'm picking 12 because 0.25 is a quarter, and I know I'm going to have to divide by 4, so I'm going to use negative 12 to test, 0, and then I'm also going to use uh, 100. I'm going to get out my TI-84 to test this. So when I test this, I'm going to plug in negative 12, I'm going to store it as x, and then I'm going to use the math button, the absolute value button, to type in this 0.25x minus 6. And again, I'm checking to see, is it going to be greater, so if we go back to this, and I should mark it here, we're looking to see greater than 8. So if we look at the original function here, all right, I'm looking to see, is this thing greater than 8? Well, I end up with 9. Is 9 greater than 8? It sure is. So this is, I'm going to put a check mark here, this area works. Now I'm going to store 0, and I'm just going to kind of write the equation out here so you can see it. This is 0.25x minus 6 greater than 8. That way I can put my calculator here. I'm going to store 0 as x Go up and grab that. That gives me 6. So is 6 greater than 8? No. This area doesn't work. And now I'm going to plug in 100, store it as x, grab that again, and I get 19. Is 19 greater than 8? Yes, it is. So my solutions go from negative infinity to negative 8, but not including negative 8 because there's no equal sign on the inequality. Union, 56 to infinity. And that's the solution for this problem graphically. Now if I solve this problem using uh, essentially just an algebra technique, what I would do is I would say that because it's greater than 8, it means that it needs to be greater than 8 from 0. So that means the numbers that work for greater than 8 from 0 are 9, 10, 11, 12, if we look on the number line here, so greater than 8 from 0, that'd be 8, 0, negative 8. The greater than 8 would be this direction, and also greater than 8 from 0 would be this direction. So this is an or problem. 
we're going to write 0.25x minus 6 is greater than 8. That's what this says. Or 0.25x minus 6 is less than negative 8. Because that's what this says. We'll flip the sign there. I'm going to add 6 to each side. And I get 0.25x greater than 14 divided by 0.25. And I get x greater than 56. And you can see that is 56 to infinity here. And then I'm going to add 6 to each side here. And I get or 0.25x less than negative 2 divide by 0.25. I get x less than negative 8, which is this piece right here. So you can see there's a, w a way to do it algebraically, there's a way to do it graphically. I prefer the graphical approach because it works for quadratic inequalities and polynomial inequalities as well.